Hi, and welcome to this first video about Lambda Triggers. Lambda Triggers is a very powerful tool, and in the next few videos we will learn what it is and how it can be very useful in several use cases. As we have seen in the previous videos, you can manually trigger a Lambda function by hitting the test button inside the AWS console, but this is of course not very useful. In this video, I want to make a Lambda function that can be triggered when a new message is available on an SQS queue. For this, we need to create or configure the following resources. An SQS queue, a Lambda function, and an IAM role with SQS access. I'm going to use the AWS console throughout this video. A Lambda trigger is what initiates a Lambda function, and one function can have multiple triggers. Let's start with SQS. For those of you who don't know what SQS is, SQS stands for Simple Message Queues and is a message queuing service. SQS queues can be used to decouple processes and store messages until applications can process them. I will now make a new SQS queue. I choose to create a queue of type standard queue. We can also choose FIFO queues. But for the sake of this demo, we don't need to ensure correct message ordering or worry about duplicate messages, which might be a topic for another day. I'll choose default settings on everything and scroll down and hit create queue. Now that's done, we need to create a Lambda function that can read messages from this queue. Let's go over to Lambda, create a new function as we have done a few times already call it queue reader and hit create. Now that we have a new and clean Lambda function, let's make use of Lambda triggers. Just click add trigger, search for SQS and choose our SQS queue. Now click add. Oh, you say we don't have access to the SQS queue? Well, that's correct because we haven't added any policy containing SQS access to our Lambda execution role. So let's do that. Go over to IAM. Open the IAM role for our Lambda function. Click Attach Policy. For the sake of this demo, I will just give this Lambda function full access to everything regarding SQS but you should of course create a custom policy with limited access for your production code. To learn how to create a custom IAM policy, please view my previous video where I gave a Lambda function access to a DynamoDB table. For now, search for SQS and just add the Amazon SQS full access policy. Go back to the Lambda function and try to add the trigger again. Perfect! Now if we take a look at the function overview, we can see that the trigger has been added. The Lambda function will now execute whenever a new message is sent to the SQS queue. It's worth mentioning that our Lambda function will read messages from the SQS queue in batches of 10 by default, each time it runs. So we need to make sure to expect more than one message if we were to do some processing of these messages. Messages are automatically deleted from the queue when our Lambda function has successfully processed them. Meaning we won't process the same message twice, except if SQS manages to send the same message more than once, which can happen when we use SQS standard queues or if the code throws an exception while processing a batch of messages. Now that we have added the trigger, when the Lambda function executes, the messages will be accessible through the event object in our Lambda handler method. So let's just print the event object and see what it contains. Our Lambda function is now ready to process our SQS messages. So let's send a message. Go back to our SQS queue. Hit send and receive messages. In the message body field, I will write a simple JSON object representing a bird with some attributes. Name and can fly. 
Lastly, hit send message. Our message should now have been processed by our Lambda function. To verify this, let's check out the CloudWatch logs. Inside our log group, we can see that there has been some recent executions of our Lambda function. And in the latest log stream, we can find log messages from our SQS message. As I said earlier, messages are read in batches, which is why the first field inside the log message is not just the content we provided in our message body, but a JSON list called records. Inside the records list, we can find a JSON object containing the message we sent with the bird name and the can fly boolean. This is awesome because this means that we now have a working Lambda function that can be triggered by messages on an SQS queue. SQS is a commonly used trigger for Lambda functions, but there are so many possible Lambda triggers. In the next video, I will show you how to trigger a Lambda function whenever something happens with an S3 bucket and how we can process that event. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And to learn more about Lambda functions, remember to subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell icon to get notified when I publish more content.